Well, hey, Manny Old Church family, it is good to be with you, and we have a special treat here uh, this afternoon, and I have with me uh, Toyin Crandall, right? Yes, hello. And, uh, Hi, everyone. Yeah, we're excited to have her with us, and it's exciting for me to introduce you to her and, and I get her to share a little bit about who she is and what, she, what she's doing here in Aurelia yes. uh, and the surrounding area and, and just some other information. So let me just ask you, uh, Toyin, who are you? Where are you from? What are you doing? And, and just a little <laughs> bit about that. And then I got another question to follow up with that. Okay. So. All right. Well, um, hi, everyone. My name is Toyin Crandall. Thank you so much, Pastor Dave, for having me here. Um, so I'm married to Joshua Crandall. I'm a mom of yep. two little ones. So I have a one-year-old called Nehemiah and a four-year-old called Maranatha. Um, I'm also a business owner, so I actually own a financial coaching company, and we help uh, we help hundreds of Canadians get rid of over a million dollars worth of debt. That's amazing. Yes, That's amazing. <laughs> I love the work we do, um, and I happen to be one of the people who are looking to represent our community. Um, and so that's that's essentially a little bit about me and what I'm doing right now. Okay. So just tell me a little bit about your background too. Uh, I know that when I met with you before, you had talked about uh, just like some of your your, your background. Your, oh your, yeah. Your, um, you know, my, just my heart for the Lord. Um, yeah. So we're we're believers, and one of the things that I love about what we've done, me and my husband actually met um, in worship leading. So uh, yeah. we've been worship leaders for over 15 years. Um, we met, I, I've had maybe four different worship albums out there and we met at my first, uh, album release. Actually, I went online and I saw that. Did just you? So you know, <laughs> it's true. She's a singer. That's right. Um, and so, yeah, done a lot of, uh, done worship and then we're both ordained, uh, ministers. Um, and we've, we've done full-time ministry evangelism, like, yeah. We just really, really, we love Jesus, yeah. uh, we love Canada, and we really believe that he loves Canada, and he yeah. has a really good plan for our nation, yeah. and that we, as believers, get to be a part of the outworking of that yeah. plan. Yeah, so when you say community, and, and you're referring to community, what does that mean for your life right now? I know that there is something that is, that, that is a part of your life. What, what, yeah. what, what, what is that community aspect for you, and what are you involved in? Or, or Yeah. yeah. Um, so for us right now, what we're actually doing is we've stepped up to the plate uh, to Bruce Stanton is our member of parliament and he's actually retiring. Um, and so all the different parties, you know, coming into an election eventually, we don't know when the election will be. Um, but all the different parties have this meeting where they choose candidates. Mm -hmm. And so I am looking to be the next conservative candidate for our, right. our area, Simcoe North. Um, and that's, that's specifically one of the ways that I'm, I'm really speaking up and stepping up in our community right now. Okay, so you're from a businesswoman to... From, from ministry, a from ministry, that's right. Because it's like pastor's kids, yeah. me, my hubby, and then we do the ministry work yeah. for, for many years, yeah. and then to business. Business, now to politics. <laughs> and now to this, yes. So let me ask you a question, because this is, this is an interesting question to me. Okay. Um, so Christian ministry politics how how that is that hard has that been hard mm. uh, what does that mean for you to be a christian in politics i would i would i would think that many of us think that that's maybe a realm that maybe we, we don't should we don't normally get into. go into that's but we right. should so that's yes. this is why it's exciting i think yeah. it's exciting um it, it's so funny because it's true you I, I think that we've seen more and more people of faith um, starting to kind of wake up to mm. the importance of our voice um, in the area of governance. Um, for me personally, you know, I, I never really, I wasn't political at yeah. all. Um, I, I never grew up imagining that one day I would run for office. It was not on the list of what do you want to be when you grow up. Um, for me, it was in the place of, you know, praying for our nation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Bible says that we should pray for those in authority. Um, the Bible says that when the righteous are in leadership, the people rejoice. Mm -hmm. And um, it, out of that place of praying for our nation, and then I, I'm naturally a community person. So mm -hmm. I'm that person that's involved in anything that you can think of that kind of moves the community forward. And it was just that combination of really wanting to see integrity mm -hmm. and really wanting to see leadership that, that is honest. That there's these, these values that I have 
as a believer mm -hmm. um, that I really want to see reflected in our leaders. And over the years, I just felt the Lord say, you know, you keep praying for these mm. types of leaders. Why don't you step yeah, yeah. to the table shouldn't and be it. that boy? <laughs> Your pastor just said, shouldn't have prayed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, but obviously. I, of course, he's joking. He's joking now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that, that's really for me what, what propelled it. But you know, there's that scripture where, where Jesus said that a light is not meant to be hidden. Yeah. You know, a city set on a hill can't be hidden. Something I love about our, our area yeah. is yeah. as you drive around, it feels like a city on a hill, especially when yeah. you drive at night and you see all the hills and the lights and you, it's the city on mm -hmm. a hill. And I really feel feel that that scripture is something that Jesus meant for all of us as believers yeah. is whatever our sphere is, whatever it is that we have a passion for and we can really be effective in, mm -hmm. um, that we wouldn't hide that light, that we would mm. step out of our comfort zone. It is, I don't think it's comfortable to be very honest, yeah. um, in, in, in going into politics, you know, getting involved. And I was like, oh, wow, this is a, this is a whole different world. Yeah. There's a lot of antagonism. Um, and coming from ministry where it, it's, it's everyone's positive, especially yeah. even in my business, you know, yeah. it's, it's extremely positive. I'm a financial coach. We help people get out of debt. It's like everyone I talk to is like, thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you. And yeah. then you step into this realm where it, it, there's e it's easily labels and, and things like that. But why I'm excited about it is I get to bring that culture of love and honor and cooperation mm. to the table. Yeah. And it's like, it's very difficult to, to, you know, find that button yeah. for someone who's kind of been through the trenches with the Lord on humility and taking the lower place. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And, and you were telling me before that this wasn't your only time in politics. You were, yeah. you, you were, you did this before. That's right. So, um, so we actually, we ran, I ran in Etobicoke North. Yeah. Um, I'd lived there for 18 years. And so I became the conservative candidate yep. in Etobicoke North. Um, and it was amazing because even doing that, one of the experiences that we had right at the end of that election, uh, the electoral officer actually came up to me and she said, um, Toy, you know, I'm completely nonpartisan and the election's over anyway. Yeah. Um, but she said, you know, I just wanted to say that this, this was the most professional campaign I mm -hmm. have seen in my, I think she had been there about 20 years, about 20 years of being the electoral officer here. And um, I said, thank you very much. You know, why do you say that? Yeah. And especially because for me, that was my first time ever doing this. And yeah. so I was like, the most professional, okay. Yeah, yeah. And um, she said, well, normally she's used to getting a lot of complaints about the yeah. different teams, you know, campaigns that are running. And uh, she said, I never get complaints about the candidates, but I'll get co complaints about their team members because the candidates never did it, yeah, you know? Yeah. And she said, this was the first campaign ever where I not only did I not get a complaint about you as a candidate, mm. but I didn't get a complaint about any member of your team. And she's mm. like, you didn't break down other people's signs. You weren't doing this. You yeah. weren't doing this. Yeah. And, and she goes down the list. You know, I just smiled and I said to her, it's because we're different. Yeah. You know, for me, it's really, really not about the politics of it. Yeah. I have Canada in my heart. Yeah. I really feel like out of that place of prayer, God has branded me for our nation yeah. um, to be a voice for our nation. And it's my passion hmm. um, to be able to be effective in getting our nation um, to that place where it, it, it just a place where it reflects the beauty, mm -hmm. the beauty, the glory of God. Yeah, yeah. Which is, you, you said you want to be a city on a hill, salt yes. and light, which I think is what that, those people were probably expressing without yes. using those words, that's right? That's right, so that's right. Now, now I, I think with uh, so, some people that may be watching this, um, there I know that there's two bills. I know you can't speak to the full breadth of it just because of time in, yes. in part. Yeah. Um, and, and I know that there's other places where people can get more information of it. But if you could just uh, kind of share, because I think that some people don't know what these bills are, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even the name of those bills, mm -hmm. and maybe just a, a very brief summary of, of what you know about those about bills. Is that, is that okay to ask? Yeah, I think, okay. I, I think that's fair. Um, so especially for me, I, I think I know the two bills that you're talking about yeah. because these we've been doing meet and greets across the community, yes. right? And so we've I think we've met with about seven over 700 people so far okay. um, in the course of campaigning, which is amazing. 
abiding by COVID guidelines. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen pictures. It's you, true. That's right. And you can see this right here. Um, but we've met with over 700 members of the community. And I know that there are two bills that have come up over and over and over again in our meet and greets. Uh, one of them is C6 yeah. and the other is C7. So yeah. these are bills that are actually currently being debated and voted on. They're going into committee. Um, in Parliament. And so one of the bills is medical assistance in dying. Um, and so that is a bill where essentially you guys may remember um, a few years back, there was a lot of debate around medical assistance in dying. Back then we called it the euthanasia bill. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was a lot of debate and it passed back then. Mm -hmm. um, and part of the, the, the commitments that were made by the government yeah. was that in four to five years, they would do a review of the process of the bill. So since the yeah. bill has become law, you know, just making sure that it wasn't abused, making sure that people weren't being harmed through this bill. And um, so what's happening right now is they haven't yet done the review. So they haven't actually looked to see, is this bill, has this bill been effective in doing what we wanted it to do and mm. actually taking care and protecting the most vulnerable Canadians? Um, so that review yeah. hasn't happened, but instead they've introduced a new bill that is actually looking to expand access to medically assisted dying. And I know that some of the concerns that some people have about this bill right now is they want to remove the need for that um, for two independent judiciaries to look and approve kind of the process. Another thing that they're, they're looking to do with the new bill is currently um, there's a 10 day kind of cooling off per period yeah. um, between, and it's the default. So between when somebody requests medical assisted dying and when the process is actually done, mm -hmm. there's this 10 day cooling period. If somebody currently wanted to speed that up, they are able to speed it up already. Yeah. Um, and we've heard instances just in the course of campaigning of people who have requested medical assisted dying and had it sped up. But what this bill wants to do is it wants to remove that automatic default 10 day cooling off period so that somebody is able to request medical assisted dying and actually have that process done within 24 hours. And yeah. I, I know that, you know, if, if you track with this, you've probably heard uh, a Gar an MP, Garnett Janice was speaking to this and, and he gave the example that really struck me. You know, he said, could you imagine mm -hmm. um, visiting a, a grandparent, you know, in, in a nursing home, for example, on a Wednesday and, yeah. you know, planning on, okay, we'll stop back in on Saturday and on Thursday, that person makes a decision for medical assisted dying. And because there is no 10 day cooling mm -hmm. off period, um, you come in to visit on Sunday and they're mm -hmm. already gone. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. the, the, the biggest thing that, that people are asking for right now is that we make sure that our government is looking to protect the vulnerable. Yeah. You know, we, we also have youth in our nation that are fighting one of the biggest battles on mental health that we've mm -hmm. ever witnessed mm -hmm. as a nation. Yeah. Um, the, the struggle in, in the mental area for our younger ones is very real and cannot be ignored. And in a moment like that, what you want is a government that is willing to be a voice for the vulnerable. Yeah. You want a government that is willing to say, look, how can we protect um, the people who are most vulnerable. And there are just certain aspects of this bill that don't feel like it is allowing for that yeah. protection of the people who are, yeah. who are vulnerable right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the bills. That's one of them. And I know that the, the second bill that a lot of people have been asking questions about yeah. has been the conversion therapy bill. Um, and one of the specific things now, <laughs> just to be super clear, I don't think anybody who's concerned about this bill is for um, abuse or coercion of, of people who are looking to have a gender transition. Yeah, um, yeah, no, yeah. I am definitely not for abuse or coercion. Oh, yeah. You know, you oh, get yeah. what I'm saying? And, oh, and yeah. I don't think most of the people that I speak to are not for that at all. In fact, I haven't met one person yeah. who is for that at all. Uh, the, the, the reason people are concerned about this bill is because the, the bill does not define conversion therapy in a specific enough gotcha. way. And so what it leaves when, when the definition isn't fixed, and there's actually a, a petition right now that people are signing called fixthedefinition.ca. Gotcha. Um, 
But when the definition isn't very clear, the concern that many people have is, could this bill begin to impact the conversations that a parent is able to have with their own child? So loving, informative, actual conversations. Mm -hmm. Could this bill impact you know, the, the freedom for a doctor to be honest with a patient? Yeah. Could this bill impact the freedom for pastors or counselors to have conversations with people who have genuine questions yeah. for them? And so I think those are some of the concerns that people have is we totally agree with yeah. protecting yeah. people who are trying to make that transition and making sure that you know they're not being abused in that place yeah. but then you also want to make sure that parental authority is guarded you want to make sure that that religious freedoms are yeah. are still in canada because we have a charter of rights and freedoms for a reason um and so those are some of the the concerns yeah. that have come up recently well again i just i appreciate you just helping us uh know that and certainly um, just informing us because yeah. sometimes we, we miss some of this, yes. this information, right? Just as, as, as people, certainly in, in light of COVID too. Exactly. Like there's, there's so there's much so much happening. going on. So I, I thank you for just taking the time, yeah. uh, to, to let us know about this. Thank you for, you know, just stopping in and, yeah. uh, letting us know about you yes. being in this area yeah. and, and what you're doing. And I know that, uh, you do hold meet and greets. You've yes. mentioned these meet and greets. You, exactly. you are holding meet and greets yeah. around this area. Yeah. And, and so if, if, if if, uh, you know, people may want to go to those meet and greets to That's know right. more about you. That's right. To, to hear more about kind of what you're, you're standing for, what, yeah. you're, you're, what you're riding for, and, and even know what next steps or, or exactly. whatnot could, and, could take place. So Yeah, and, and one of the, the things that I, I love to share with, with people is just, this is just information for people to know how we can be a voice. Because that's one of the questions that a lot of people ask is, you know, I, I watch the news and I see what's happening in our nation and I want to be a voice and I have no idea, you know, where yeah. to start, what to do, yeah. how to get my voice heard. Um, and so one of the, the best ways to do that. So right now, every single party in our area is going to have this one meeting where each party is going to choose who their candidate is going to be for the coming election. And I'm sure that members of Emmanuel could belong to many different parties. Yep, they probably and so, do. Exactly. And so the, the biggest thing that I, I kind of encourage us as believers to do is to get your voice heard. So mm -hmm. whatever party you ascribe to, make sure that you're... So normally people will say maybe I vote here or I vote there. So it's like whatever party you normally vote, go ahead, get a membership, show up at the one meeting that they have mm -hmm. and actually be a voice for yeah. speaking. So who do you want to see be your voice and represent you? Yeah. And, and I think that's the biggest thing is as believers, we really pray. I mean, we believe in the yeah. power of prayer for yeah. our nation and we've prayed. And I really think a lot of people have stood in the gap for Canada yeah. and we sing it in our national anthem. You know, God, we stand on guard uh, yeah. for Canada. And I think one of the, the ways that the church is starting to, to kind of rise yeah. up is, you know, how can we be the action behind our prayer? Yeah. And that really encourages me because when we look at the example of Jesus Christ himself, you know, he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane yeah. and then he went to the cross yeah, yeah, yeah. and he, he did the action yeah. as well. And so it's like going from that place of prayer to say, OK, what can I actually do to put my hands yeah. to the plow um, to see what I'm praying for yeah. actualized? Yeah. Well, Toyin, I got to say, um, I love your passion for our country. Amen. Uh, I, w I think it's safe to say that both you and I love our country. Yes. And love it, love it so much. And I love your passion for the Lord. Amen. Um, the, 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 the times that I've met you, you, it just radiates from you. And I love that passion. And I know you're a busy person. I mean, you were <laughs> at a meeting, you're racing to a meeting, you yes. stopped in here and... Uh, <laughs> Um, and, and you were places all uh, yesterday, all the way this week. Brecken, so, Midland, yeah, Penitent. Yeah. So, uh, so I know that you're busy, but thank you so much for thank stopping you. in, taking this time to, to just speak to me, to, to let our church family know who you are in this area and, and just taking the time to do that. Thank you. Uh, I really do appreciate it. And we thank people like you who really fight for our country, who are there for our country and really wanting to affect positive, good change for our country. So. Uh, thank you so much for coming and thank just sharing. You. And Emmanuel family, uh, good to be with you again. Um, and and we'll, God bless you and we'll see you soon.